Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. So as you can probably tell by the background behind me, I am at the pet store. Specifically, I am at Critter Jungle. So now the reason that I'm here today and filming is because I am going to be bringing home some very exciting animals soon, which you guys already know by the title of this video. So yes, I am in fact getting dart frogs. If you've been watching my channel for a while now, you will know that this is not a species I have ever kept before. I have other types of frogs like my white tree frog, my chubby frog, and my mossy frog, but dart frogs are completely new to me and I'm super excited. So I also want to point out that I forgot my camera, so I am filming on my phone right now, so I apologize if the quality isn't as good as it normally is, but what can you do? So today I'm not going to be getting my frogs. I still have some things that I need to do at home in order to fully prepare for them, but I thought that I would just bring you guys along to check out the frogs that I am going to be getting. So right behind me here are all of Critter Jungle's dart frog enclosures. As you can see, there is a decent selection of them. There are a lot of really cool dart frog species here. When I decided that I wanted to get dart frogs, it it took me a little bit to figure out what species I wanted because they're all just so beautiful and they're all just so cool. So out of all of these options, I ended up really debating between these guys right here. So these here are the Phyllobates terribilis golden. So these are a super interesting species of dart frog and my favorite color is yellow, so I am also just a sucker for anything yellow. But I was also really interested in the Dendrobates tinctorius here. So after doing some research on the two species, I ended up deciding that I wanted to get a pair of the Dendrobates tinctorius azurius. And this is them right in here. Now, I made this decision after doing some research on both of the species that I was interested in, and ultimately I came to the conclusion that the D. tinctorias are going to be a better option for my first frogs ever. Like I said, dart frogs are completely new to me, so I decided that these guys would be a better option for a beginner dart frog keeper like myself. And another reason why I decided to get these guys is because when I was a kid, I remember going into a pet store that was by my house and I remember seeing the blue poison dart frogs, which I now know are the Azurius dendrobates tinctorius, and I was just in love with them. I was so fascinated by them. I remember as a kid, I had like frog toys that looked like the Azurius dart frogs. So I really just fell in love with them as a kid. So now that I am here getting ready to own some dart frogs, I decided that I wanted to go with the species that I very first fell in love with. So as I mentioned earlier, I'm not going to be bringing these guys home today, unfortunately. While I would love to, I still have quite a bit of preparation that I need to do before I get them. So let's go ahead and head back to my house and start getting ready for these dart frogs. Hello everyone! Before we get started preparing for my future dart frogs, I want to thank ExoTerra for sponsoring not only this video, but this entire video series. I am going to be documenting my journey of getting dart frogs and turning it into a six part series here on my channel. I am so excited to be partnering with my friends at Exoterra for this project. Earlier this year, Exoterra came out with a new product line called Frogs & Co. Some of the products in this line include terrariums, lights, substrate, and plenty more. A few months ago, I partnered with Exoterra to test out some of these new products with my mossy frog Bert, who is actually right beside
had me here. So I honestly had a wonderful experience working with Exoterra and overall I had a very positive opinion of many of the products that I used. So when I decided that I wanted to get dart frogs, I decided to contact Exoterra and ask them if they would like to work with me on this project. So a huge thank you to Exoterra for helping me make this series possible and for sending me many of the products that you're going to see throughout this series. The link to the Exoterra Frogs & Co website will be down in my description below, so make sure you go and check that out after watching this video. Now let's go ahead and start preparing for my future dart frogs. So like I mentioned earlier in the video, I don't yet have my frogs, but I would say that I am decently prepared. I have all of this stuff here that is going to be used for both their quarantine setup and then their permanent setup. So right now what I need to do is go ahead and get my quarantine setup ready for my frogs. So I'm not going to be using this glass enclosure here yet, but instead I will be using this plastic bin to like I said, make a quarantine setup for the frogs. So the first thing I need to do in order to get this bin ready for the frogs is give it a good clean. So this bin hasn't been used for animals in a long time, but there have been other animals here in the past. So because of that, I wanna make sure that it is fully clean and sanitized before I go ahead and get the frogs set up in here. So as you all know by now, Exoterra very generously sent me a bunch of stuff that I'm going to be using for my dart frog. And on top of that, I also have some things like pieces of wood and some mushroom ledges that I will be using in the enclosure as well. Now, most of what they sent me isn't going to be used on my quarantine enclosure, but I will be using some of it. So I'm going to go ahead and open this up and get all of my stuff out. I've, I have basically been using this terrarium to like store all of my supplies. So everything that I'm going to be using is currently inside of here. I honestly have no idea how all of this stuff fits in here because there is like a lot of stuff. But anyways, we're gonna go ahead and just grab what we need for the quarantine enclosure. So I feel like when most people think of a quarantine setup, they think of something super simple with just like a plastic bin, paper towel on the bottom, and then one or two hides and a water bowl. But that is not the route that we are going to be going today. So because of the nature of dart frogs, I don't really think that that would be a great setup for them, even just for temporary purposes. So I'm going to be giving them a setup that does still have some substrate and leaf litter and stuff, but at the same time, I'm going to be keeping it relatively simple so that it is still really easy for me to monitor the frogs and keep an eye on them. So here are some of the things that I'm going to be using in the quarantine setups. So here I have the Exoterra Terra Skylight. So this is going to be going on here because again, even for a temporary bin, I still do plan on putting a couple live plants in here. So I'm going to be using the light for the plants and then also just to give the frogs a good day night cycle. And here we have a few different hide options. So I have this Exoterra small reptile cave and then I also have this new Exoterra coconut hut. And then in addition to those two hides, I also have two natural coconut hides. Now I don't know if I'll end up using all four of these in the enclosure, but I brought them all down just in case because I honestly don't know exactly how this is going to be set up. I'm just going to go with it and see what I come up with. And then underneath the hides here, we have some substrates. These substrates here are part of the um, Exoterra two and one dual layer substrate. So both of them have some uh, coconut fiber substrate and then this one here comes with a bit of moss and then this one comes with leaf litter. With all that said, let's just go ahead and start setting up the bin. Thank you. 
So our substrate is now all in the bin. As you guys probably saw, I had to wet it down a lot. So in the package, the substrate was quite dry, but dart frogs obviously need a lot of humidity and a lot of moisture, so I really, really, really wet this down, and I might even have to wet it down some more before I add my frogs, but for now we're gonna leave it at this and finish setting up the rest of the enclosure. Okay, so now that our substrate is in, I'm going to go ahead and just add all of this leaf litter. And with the leaf litter in, we are going to go ahead and spray it down again. So this probably seems like a lot of leaf litter. So based off the research that I did, it seems that most people agree that it is a lot more natural and beneficial to them to have a nice bed of leaf litter on top of their substrate. And now we are going to get to adding our frog hides. So this is most of what I'm putting in the enclosure, but like I mentioned earlier, I am also going to be adding a few plants into this. So even though this is just a temporary observation enclosure, I want to go ahead and add a couple plants just to help make the frogs feel more secure and comfortable in their new environment. Since this is just a temporary enclosure, I'm going to be keeping the plants really basic and I'll likely just be using a couple pothos cuttings, but to the frogs, that will definitely make make a difference. And in the future when we go to set up the frog's permanent enclosure, I will be using many different types of plants and many really interesting type of plants. But like I said, for now we are going to be keeping it pretty basic. All right, so these are the plants that I decided I'm going to use in this enclosure. So right here we have a Tradescantia. I'm probably saying that wrong. And then over here we have a bunch of pothos that I've just been growing in this jar of water. There we go, my dart frog observation enclosure is completed. So it is going to be a few days still until I welcome my frogs home. So that's going to give me a chance to be able to monitor the temperatures and humidity in this enclosure and make sure that everything is appropriate for my frogs before I bring them home. I'm so happy that in this video, I was able to introduce you to the frogs I'm going to be getting and also show you how I set up their future observation enclosure. As I mentioned earlier, this journey is going to be a six part series here on my channel so there is still so much more fun content to come and I am so excited for you to see it. So over the next six weeks I am going to be releasing each part of my series every Thursday. So each Thursday there is going to be a new part of the series uploaded on my channel. So if you want to stick around for that series then make sure you are subscribed to my channel if you aren't already. I am getting so close to hitting my goal of 100,000 subscribers so it would really mean the world to me if you subscribed. If you enjoyed this video, also be sure to give it a big thumbs up and also don't forget to check out the Exoterra Frogs & Co website. The link is down in my description below. Once again, thank you so much to Exoterra for sponsoring this video and just helping with this series. It is truly appreciated and I am so excited to move forward with this. If you aren't already, also make sure that you are following me on social media. I post 
plenty more animal content on Instagram and TikTok, so uh, make sure you follow me over there if you want to see more awesome animal content. All of my social media will also be down in the description below. With all of this said, I am going to go ahead and end this video now. Thank you all so much for watching, I truly appreciate it, and I hope to see you all for the rest of this series. Thank you.